What's up guys, it's your girl T back with another video and I've called this an unhaul. Anti-hauls, I love them. I watch them all the time. Kimberly Clark may or may not have invented them. My girl Makeup Struggle said someone else had done an anti-haul prior to Kimberly Clark, but in any event, I credit Kimberly with at least popularizing the anti-haul. And because I have a backlog of videos pretty much at any given time that I would like to do, an anti-haul was definitely one of them. The list of shit that I was not going to buy got longer and longer and longer, but the longer I waited to do it, the more popular anti-haul videos became on YouTube, to the point of almost complete market saturation. And me being me, I just didn't want to do it anymore at that point. The main thing with every video I set out to do and what I set out to do with my channel overall is to not do the same shit that I see being done everywhere else. With any content I do, I want to make sure that I'm adding something to a conversation at least, if not starting a new one entirely. So I decided against doing an anti-haul because I feel like it's pretty well covered. You got Kimberly Clark doing them on a consistent basis. You've got Tiffany, who I love by the way, I'll link her channel in the description box. Her, her channel name is like Tiff Jeff so, and some numbers. But I'll just link her in the description box so it's easy for you to find her because she does anti hauls all the time as well and they're really good. But I think we all know that I am neither about tea nor shade. <laughs> but I did come up with an idea of a bit of a spin off. Rather than talking about shit that I'm not gonna buy, I wanted to talk about shit that I bought that I took back to the stow. So behold, this is my first ever unhaul. <laughs> It's very similar to another video I already did called YouTube Made Me Buy It and It Sucked, I think I called it. So I combined that idea with the general idea of an anti-haul and thus the unhaul was born. If you are also a video creator, I encourage you to jump on this bandwagon and let's start a series of unhaul videos because quite honestly, I think the shit that you actually go through the bother of taking back to the store says a lot about how bad it was or at the very least how poorly it worked out for you. Talking about shit that I'm not gonna buy, I can do until the cows come home, but to actually go through the bother of digging out my receipt and taking something back to Ulta, taking something back to Sephora, taking something back to Nordstrom, that takes a lot more effort, and I obviously felt very strongly about getting my money back, so let's get started. The first item is a foundation from Gerla called the Lingerie de Peu. <laughs> I picked this foundation up from Sephora during their fall sale and it just did nothing for my skin. It didn't do anything for me in the coverage department. The shade selection wasn't really working out for me either. They had very sort of salmon-y, peachy undertones and I am straight yellow golden all day. So I gave it a few wears. I tried applying it a few different ways and this is a high-end foundation. It is Guerlain. But that shit went back. Unhauled. I thought I would like it because I do love the Guerlain Meteorites. I actually have it right here because I have all my stuff sitting out from when I just got ready. I love the Meteorites as my finishing powder. It is fantastic. But that foundation, it did nothing for me. And for the price tag, there was no way I was keeping it. Next up is another high-end product. These were the Tom Ford Cream Shadows, two shades in particular. I do still have a couple shades of those Tom Ford Cream Shadows. I love Platinum and Spice. I have those both still, use them all the time. They're great. But there is a purple shade and a black shade. I think the black shade is called like Black Caviar or something. I can't remember what the purple shade was called. But this is Tom Ford makeup. This shit is expensive. Those two shades were very sheer and patchy, not pigmented at all, not worth the money by a long shot. If I'm dropping serious coins on an item, and I'm no stranger to luxury makeup, I'm used to spending a lot and getting what I pay for. But if I don't, I will absolutely take that shit back to the stove. The nice thing is generally when you're buying luxury items like Tom Ford, Guerlain, you're getting it from places like Sephora and Nordstrom and they have excellent return policies. So I am never afraid, I am never ashamed, and I am never too lazy to take shit back. I know a lot of people get up in their feelings about taking shit back and they don't want to feel embarrassed or something. I'm not ashamed at all. If anyone should be embarrassed, it's the company that put out a shitty product. I'm sensing a theme here. The next thing on my list is another high-end product, like very luxury makeup that simply wasn't worth the money. And it is this, this Burberry eyeshadow palette. I tend to stay away from colored eyeshadows. You wouldn't necessarily tell by the way I look right now, but I have been experimenting more with color shadows and this was an attempt to do that by picking up this palette of all various tones of blue from Burberry. As it is Burberry, they did the shades in a very sort of sophisticated way. If, if you're going to wear blue eyeshadow, this range is about as classy as it can get. 
Unfortunately, upon putting these shadows on my eyeballs, I was extremely disappointed with the pigmentation, blendability, and just the overall look. I have a video where you can actually see me wearing that palette on my eyes, and I was just like, that looks like turds. Just blended turds on my eye. Blue turds, of course. Let's not be ridiculous. But just turds uh, in a bluish hue. And that was the death knell for that palette. After seeing how bad it looked, not just in real life, but on video, took that shit right back. Unhauled it. Sticking with the high-end slash luxury train, I took back the Bobbi Brown Color Corrector in the Pot. I believe the shade I had was Deep Peach, and this will be surprising for those of you who have been riding with me for a long time, because I have sung the praises of Bobbi Brown Color Correctors in the uh, Doe Foot Wand Applicator format. That I really like. The pot corrector didn't work for me at all. It was just a very sticky, tacky texture. I just didn't like the way it felt on my skin. I felt it was hard to blend and it just didn't work for me. I don't know what to tell you. It was just one of those things where like, I don't necessarily feel like it was a flawed product for everyone. And, and I guess I would say that about all of these, but it certainly wasn't going to work for me and my skin type and the way I like to apply my makeup. If I feel like something is dragging on my skin when I'm attempting to blend it out, which is how I felt about this product, especially if it's going under my eyes with that oh-so-delicate skin, that's a no-go. And it went bye-bye. Back to the stove. Next up is a product slash brand that I don't really hear a ton about, and that would be Besame. I took back their yellow powder. They had some version of a banana powder or some sort of off-white powder, I can't quite remember. Picked it up at Sephora. And this was when everyone was first sort of discovering banana powders and trying to figure out which one was the best. It was Sasha versus Ben Nye versus Anastasia. And I decided to try Besame's. I love the feel of that brand. I've never tried anything else since and I definitely do plan to give them another chance. But that powder, it just didn't work for my skin tone. It looked very cakey immediately and just far too light. Again, because I've got all of my makeup still laid out from when I got ready today, this Laura Mercier powder, this is the original translucent one. This is not too light for me because it is actually translucent. As long as I don't over apply it, I can put it on, I can bake with it if I want to, which I pretty much never do. Dust away the excess and I'm fine. I don't look like Ashy Larry, I've got no problems. But for some reason, the Besame powder did all of the things that I don't want my powders to do. So I'm afraid I unhauled it. Ah, here's something from the drugstore slash inexpensive end. Andrea Lashes. I've uh, come a long way in my life as a lash wearer from where I was when I first started doing videos here where I essentially never wore fake eyelashes ever at all and never thought I'd be able to because I couldn't get them on my eyes. But as I said many times, having to do on camera work, Cinefix tasted and so on, I realized the value of fake eyelashes when people are seeing you on camera. Being the cheapskate that I am, I decided, hey, let's stick with drugstore in the beginning because I'm not very good at these. So I was doing the Ardells and usually right next to Ardells, you see Andrea lashes. I think they may even be manufactured by the same people, but I don't know. In any event, I'm at Ulta one day and I just decided, hey, let's, let's try out these Andrea lashes. Lord of mercy, I have never felt an eyelash stabbing me in my eyelid in the same way before or since. A large part of your comfort with wearing fake eyelashes is making sure you don't put them too close to the inner portion of your eyeball. But I would say at this point, I knew that. So it wasn't a placement issue. It was an issue of the band being made out of like rigid cellophane. I don't know what the fuck their last band was made out of, but when I took a close look at it, it just looked like it was like a hard strip of plastic. And I didn't even wear them for more than 60 seconds. I think I got them on my eyeballs, maybe even just one of them. And the discomfort I felt with that lash band was just like, this is going nowhere. I had to take them off immediately and I actually did return them. I let them know that I used them, of course. But it was more like, hey, even though these lashes were like $2, that's two dollars you need to get back to me because this is trash. I very much operate on an every penny counts kind of lifestyle. So even though I will drop a lot of money on luxury items, I do so thoughtfully. And just because something's cheap, if it didn't work out, I am happy to get my money back for that too. I am just as happy to get my money back for that as I am to get my money back for something that costs 10 times as much. I'm just saying be judicious with your dollars, ladies and gents. Ah, here we go back into more high-end makeup. 
The Hourglass Foundation Stick. I have heard so many people rave about that foundation, and I really love Hourglass. I mean, I've covered it so many times on my channel, how much I love their ambient lighting powder, how much I love their highlighters, because they subtle girl. I love their bronzers. They're my go-to bronzers pretty much all the time. I have a couple others that I switch in just so that I can trick myself into thinking I'm interesting. But Desert Island, just give me my hourglass bronzer and I'll be Gucci, baby. So anyway, I decided to pick up this foundation stick from Sephora because I love hourglass. Everyone says it's great. I kind of want a stick foundation for my arsenal because it's great for travel. That foundation looked just wrong. It just looked wrong on my skin. It looked so wrong. Like, how are you not going to give me coverage and then also be cakey? And then also the undertones of the shades weren't working out. Like there really wasn't a shade for me. They've got a pretty extensive shade range, but I didn't feel like out of all the shades they had, any of them really worked for me. Which is actually true for their Immaculate Foundation, the Liquid to Powder Foundation. I still use it, I have to mix it because I've had that one for a long time and I've been using it for quite a while. In fact, I should probably get rid of the bottle I have because they've changed the packaging and the whole thing and I was like, damn, is this shit that old? I digress. But for me, Hourglass, in terms of their, their complexion products, their foundations, the shades are wonky. At least for me, I can never just seem to find a match and that was definitely true with that stick foundation. I found like three shades that were almost right, but they would be too orange or too rich or too this or too that. So none of the shades worked and then the one that like kind of sort of might have worked looked like dog shit on my face. It was just straight doo-doo and I was not here for paying that much for a product that I would have to make work. I don't want to have to try to fix it with powder. I don't want to have to do anything. If a product costs that much, it needs to work from the jump. And so it went back to the stow. Last up is a product in which I feel extremely vindicated because very recently I realized that it has been on the Sephora sale page in excess of a year. And these are the Sephora slash Haku Hodo brushes. These brushes dropped year before last, I think 2015 they came out. They are synthetic brushes that supposedly <laughs> Sephora worked with Haku Hodo to create. If you are not familiar with Haku Hodo, it is basically the best brush brand out there. It is the Cadillac of makeup brushes, just handmade Japanese artisanal. It's not artisanal as far as I'm concerned, it is artisanal brushes. And I have, I think, two actual Haku Hodo brushes that I got from the Fame Expo over two different years because they're expensive. But they're really, really fancy, fancy brushes. So when I saw the opportunity to get some synthetic ones, co branded with Sephora to help kind of, you know, dumb it down a little bit for us yokels. You know, I ain't no pro. I just want to basically make my makeup as user-friendly as possible, which is a big part of why I tend to like luxury makeup is it's a lot more user-friendly. It's a lot harder to fuck it up. But these brushes suck. They shed like dogs, couldn't blend for shit, and they weren't even that soft. I bought the whole set. I don't even know if the, the whole set version of these brushes is on the sale page. Maybe those are sold out, but I for sure have seen the individual brushes still available on the Sephora sale page a year plus since they launched. They're just that good. A lot of companies are doing amazing thing with synthetic brushes these days. It Cosmetics, hello. They're expensive as fuck for synthetic brushes, but damn, are they soft and nice. And even on the lower end, Real Techniques, inexpensive as fuck, nice as fuck, I don't think I've ever had any of my Real Techniques brushes shed on me ever. And I've had them for years. I keep going like New York Jewish grandma because I've been drinking and I am from Queens and that is who I really am on the inside. Regardless, those brushes sucked and I was so keen to get them. I was so excited to have a set of Haku Hodo brushes because it had face brushes, it had some eye brushes. I was so excited and I don't remember being that disappointed in a product that I was truly excited about in quite some time. Usually when I pick something up, I'm just kind of like, oh, this might be cool. But with those, I came in way too hot. That Haku Hodo name had me like feeling extra excited and just the disappointment, it's still palpable. So, unhauled them. Took those shits back, they were terrible. Not worth the price because even though they were synthetic and even though they were Sephora branded, they weren't cheap. 
they were cheaper than like real Hakankoto brushes. But quite frankly, I would just recommend saving up your money and buying one real Hakankoto brush than that cheap set of trash. That is it. That will do it for my first unhaul. I don't know how this type of thing works, but if I'm allowed to tag people in which why the fuck wouldn't I be? Why am I making rules for myself that don't exist? I obviously tag Kimberly Clark because her anti-hauls were a huge inspiration for me even coming up with this idea of unhauling. And I also tag any and all of you out there who also make videos, or even if you don't, this could be your first one. And let us all know what we should avoid buying because you already tried it and you hated it enough to take it back. And if you don't make videos, leave some warnings for us in the comment section below, please. Help us all to save our money. That is it for this one, but there is a solid chance I'll be doing another unhaul before you know it because the eyeshadow palette I used today might wind up in it. Spoiler alert, but I think that's enough negativity for one day. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs>